Hello my TBDs, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing a wear test Wednesday on a newly launched brand and primer that I found on Ulta. It's called Peach and Lily. I've never heard of this brand before. I've never heard any of their products, so I'm excited to test this out today. If you are new to my channel, I do a wear test Wednesday at least every other week where I review a new product that launched either a primer, foundation, something that claims to be long wearing, and I test it out for 10 hours and see how it does. So if you enjoy wear test Wednesdays and you want me to keep them on coming, be sure to give this one a thumbs up so I know and don't forget to subscribe because I do upload every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Right now it is 10:23. So this is the Peach and Lily Skin Shield Blurring Primer. This retails for $34. I bought mine on Ulta. Right now it has four stars. It says that it is a skin shield blurring primer. It's a clean, non-toxic, silicone-free primer that blurs pores and texture, instantly fills in lines, smooth skin for perfect makeup application. The best part, it serves as your skin's bodyguard against pollution, blue light, and makeup. It says apply for instantly smooth radiance, skin appearance and texture improve with continued use over time. So it sounds like it does have some skincare in here. It says you can wear it two ways, before makeup for a smooth, cake-free, long-lasting, and seamless makeup application, or on bare skin for a smooth, filtered effect and a satin matte finish that glows. I don't know how it can be satin matte and glow, but I guess we'll see. It also has some really good information online that talks about the botanical breakthrough. It said there's three years of research with 40 chemists that created a plant-based silicone alternative. It has three ingredients, bamboo, mulberry, and burdock root extracts. It's called Volu Smooth. Gives an instantly smooth, bouncy finish while protecting and improving skin. So there's a lot of claims on here, lots of scientific sounding stuff. It's supposed to help with pores, texture, smooth, smooth, blurred, long-lasting makeup that grips well, cake-free, formula won't clog pores or cause breakouts, no pilling, helps protect against mask knee, breakouts caused by protective masks. That is very interesting. It is recommended for all skin types, cruelty-free with Leaping Bunny certification, I don't know what that is, vegan, gluten-free, non-GMO, clean, non-toxic. Yeah, all packaging is either glass or recyclable, so... There you go. Sounds like there's a lot of really awesome things in this little primer. Let's go ahead and scoot a little closer and get to actually testing out the product. The packaging that it comes in is pretty cute, very like eye-catching. And then here is the actual primer. It looks like it's a pump, so you might not get every single ounce of product out of this, but just because it is a pump, you can't tell how much you've used out of this container. You do get 1.01 ounces of product. Okay, cool. So it's the basically it's supposed to be skincare plus a silicone like formula without it being silicone like there's an alternative here packaging really nice very lightweight very sleek looks nice I'm all about if it's gonna help with masking because you guys it's real <laughs> the price tag isn't I mean it's $34 it's not the most I paid for a primer but it is up there in terms of like a more expensive primer it looks like a lotion when it comes out it does say fragrance free and it doesn't seem to have any kind of scent. It feels almost a little watery also. Mm, feels very nice, spreading really nicely on the skin. Here's how it's looking. Instantly, you definitely get that radiance. It's almost like I applied a Becca primer to my skin. Now I wonder how it's gonna look once I allow it to set down a little bit. I'm all about a primer that makes your skin look better over time if it has some skincare stuff in it. I'm going to use my number seven foundation drops. This is not really a foundation, it's just pigment so it's not going to alter the way that the primer is sitting on the skin and basically whatever finish the primer has this is gonna have that same finish feels very nice very lightweight doesn't feel like heavy or sticky or anything it does have just a little bit of tackiness to it but not where it's like annoying tacky you know I'm hoping because it does say blurring smoothing all of those things that you want in a primer those are my kind of primers and it does say a satin matte finish so I'm really hoping hoping that it does all that because that would be a great primer for me. There's a lot of people saying that they love this primer and that I should throw out my other primers. <laughs> Others said it like left your skin looking shiny and a little bit greasy. So we're just gonna have to see if it actually does give a satin matte finish. I would say that while it's been on my skin, it definitely is not as glowy as it was when I first applied it, but it does have a little bit of a shine there. So I'm gonna take my makeup eraser sponge, go in with the number seven foundation drops. 
It seems like this brand really is thoughtful about the way that they are describing the product, the research, and this, all of the chemists and stuff that went into the development of this brand. I don't know, it just seems very well thought out. The finish of this kind of reminds me of the Tula primer that I tried like a month ago. Oh my god, what is this itch? Is it like a hair? It reminds me of that formula. Just with how it looks on the skin, it's I don't know, the Tula one that definitely did not control my oil or anything. It had skincare benefits to it. It did say it was going to make your foundation last longer. So it's had similar claims. So right now it still definitely has a bit of a glow to it. I would not say it's satin matte, my pores do look nice and filled in. My skin definitely looks smooth. It just looks a little bit more shiny than I'm used to. I'm gonna take my L'Oreal Infallible Full Wear Concealer. I've been really getting back into this. It has such good coverage. You need just like, ooh, that's way too much. The tiniest amount. Just with how it looked underneath the foundation, I'm not sure if I would wear this on its own for like non-foundation days. I mean, maybe if it was supposed to help with fine lines, wrinkles, all that good stuff, you know, and it actually did help on the skincare end, maybe I would, but it seems like it's a little bit glowy for an everyday like blurring primer without adding foundation on top. I'm gonna take my Laura Mercier powder. I use this with all my wear tests. Running low here, come on. I'm gonna set everything down. I always have to set my foundation or else I'm gonna be a greasy hot mess. So here's how one side looks after setting it down compared to the other side. There's still a bit of a glow like on my cheek, on my forehead. All right, so it's totally set down. I can still see like this much of a glow coming through, but it is, I would say now, a nice satin matte finish after I've set it down. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish out the rest of my makeup. I'll be back to share how everything applied on top. It is currently 10.48. We're gonna call the check-in time maybe 10.30ish, because that's when I actually applied the primer to my skin. So here is how everything is looking after doing the rest of my makeup. Everything applied really nicely on top of it. Yeah, I don't really have any complaints. The one thing I will say is I'm already starting to notice it getting just a little bit more shiny as I was doing my makeup. So hopefully it slows down a little bit because I haven't had this on for very long. I do think that it made my skin look very soft, very nice, definitely blurred my pores right here. It says it's good for fine lines and wrinkles. So hopefully it doesn't like sink into my fine lines. I mean, my skin looks really nice. I'm just curious if it's gonna hold up and not be a greasy mess by the end of the day. So we will check back in a little bit later in the day and see how it's holding up. All right, you guys, it is 4.45, so I've had this primer on for about six hours, so we are just over the halfway mark. So I wanna tell you guys how my skin is looking. I can definitely see my oil. My skin still looks really good. I would say that it is coming off my nose just a little bit right here, but not bad. It really doesn't look too oily at all. I might to go ahead and blot just once and see how it holds up because it kind of seems to me like this is a primer that you are going to have to blot with if you have oily skin. I would not say this is a super mattifying primer, but I do really like the way that it looks on the skin. I think it looks really soft, very flattering. Yeah, it just makes my skin look very skin-like. So that's always uh, a good thing. So I'm definitely happy with how it's wearing so far. We're gonna have to see, give it a few more hours. I will probably be maybe over the 10 hour mark because we're gonna go over to my parents' house for a game night, but I don't mind doing a blotting sheet every now and then. I have matte primers that I still have to blot with because my oil just cannot be controlled. So, but yeah, I've definitely been enjoying how it's looking on the skin and it has kept like my bronzer blush highlight on my skin, which is awesome. So we'll see how it holds up. What is this hair doing? So we will see how it is looking at the very end of the evening. It is the very end of the evening. It is almost 9.15, so I've had this on for well over 10 hours at this point. Almost 12, actually. Here's how the skin is looking. I actually think that in terms of it keeping my foundation and the powder products on top looking nice, I think it did a really good job. I only blotted once and it still looks less oily than some of my other mattifying primers. Now, I'm not even wearing a mattifying foundation, so 
I think if I applied that on top, that would make it last even longer in terms of oil control. So I'm really happy actually with how it wore. I don't think that it made me look super oily. I will say it's not the most mattifying primer I've ever used. If you do have oily skin, I definitely use a mattifying powder and a mattifying foundation and I think you'd be just fine. So I'm definitely gonna continue to use this. My skin looked really nice. You can barely even see my forehead lines and I don't think it really sunk into my fine lines very much. Just barely came off on my chin, but not as much as other products normally do. For the most part, it did a really good job at keeping my makeup on and keeping my skin looking really good. Over 10 hours is a long time to wear foundation and just product makeup products in general. So I think for wearing it over 10 hours, almost 12, I think it's a pretty decent product. Is it worth the $34, $30 that it is? I don't know. I'm going to have to see. It, I'm always curious when it says that it has skincare in it, if it actually is going to help. I'm definitely going to continue to use it for the next couple days, see how it does. But first impressions, I give it a thumbs up. I definitely want to continue to use it and try it with more mattifying products because I think I just probably wouldn't have to blot maybe throughout the day. But I hope you guys enjoyed this Wear Test Wednesday. If there's any other products coming up that are launching that you would like me to grab so I can do a wear test for you, let me know that down in the comments. But I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.